Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion Node Breakdown. Today's node is the Projection 3D node. So we're going to jump into Fusion and we've got a little setup here. And the other day we discussed the Camera 3D node and using it as projection. So if we were to, uh, say, bring in some media and input it into our uh, little image input, right here we now have this projection mode and we can enable camera projection and if we uh, bump up our uh, our light here you can see our camera is projecting on the back of our little camera node so we've got that video projecting but it's not projecting on our textures or anything it's just projecting in the back of that uh, camera so today we're going to cover the projection 3D node, which will allow us to project images onto uh, objects and textures. So let's disconnect this. And let's turn our ambient light back down. So we just got our spotlight going. And let's go ahead and hit shift space and bring in a projector 3D node. Now what this node is gonna do is it's gonna act like a spotlight and it's going to project that image just like a spotlight onto whatever we kind of tell it to project on. So let's go ahead and bring this into our merge and let's bring our media into our white input, which is our uh, image input. And you can see our image is now projected onto our objects and they're odd colors because we do have color assigned to all of our shapes so we can go into our shapes and uh, just make these all white so it's showing the true colors of our uh, projection and there we go we are now projecting onto those shapes and you can see that it's uh, abiding by our texture and our uh, specular and all that stuff when it's projecting onto these shapes. Now, the way this node needs to be brought in is it needs to be brought into a merge with whatever you want to project onto. So we've got all of our little shapes into this single merge. Now, before I jump into these settings, let's work out a few issues down the line. So if I look at our render, we can see it's rendering. Now, if I was to, say, bring in a plane, and let's input that in, and let's see where our plane is. Let's make it pretty big, and let's send it to the uh, behind our shapes there, and let's look at our render node. We can see that is now projecting on that shape within here. And this is because on our merge node, we have pass through lights checked. If we uncheck this, it is no longer passing through. So it's only projecting on our shapes and not anything else beyond. So let's go ahead and turn our spotlight intensity down. And you can see that is affecting those shapes as well. Now, if you don't want your spotlight, which is plugged into this merge, to be affected, we can uncheck pass-through lights. And let's go ahead and bring a, another merge node and put it here. And we're going to remove this and input it back here. So now we've got pass-through lights shut off, so our spotlight is only affecting anything within this node, which is our background here. So we can come in here and change our intensity. But it's not affecting our uh, merge, our 3D shapes. And additionally, this projection is not affecting anything in here because we have pass-through lights unchecked. So that's what your pass-through lights is doing, telling it whether it's going to affect other nodes or not. So now let's look at our actual projector and what it looks like. So we brought up our little uh, 3D here, you can see these dotted lines going across. And our projector node is actually projecting a giant uh, like pyramid. 
So it's square in shape. It's not necessarily the size of our footage. It's square and it's projecting onto anything that is in front of it. So if we go to our projector node and we go to transform. So if we transform on our X, you can see we're shifting our image out of that projection area. Same with our Y. There's the top and there's the bottom. And your Z will affect how close or far that's projecting. And we can also adjust rotation and your pivot. On the controls themselves, we have whether your projector is enabled or not. You can change the color so you can offset those colors of your projection. Your intensity, because remember this is acting like a spotlight and your decay type. So by default, there's no decay. So anything up close is going to get the same amount of light as something way off in the distance. If we want to adjust decay, we can just use linear. So the further away, the darker it is or quadric, which is the same thing, just a little more intensive. Your angle, just adjust that cone angle, even though it's not a cone, it's a pyramid. Remember And how we fit our footage inside that pyramid. So inside just means it's going to cover the inside at the default re aspect ratio. We can do it by width, by height, whether it's covering all the outside or whether it's stretching to fit. Now under our projection modes where it says light, that means it's acting like a spotlight. If we use ambient light, it's going to act like an ambient light, which means it's not going to cast shadows. It's just going to be even everywhere within our uh, shapes. And we also have texture, which I'm not going to go over. I will cover this portion when we go over textures. And uh, just so you know, this requires a catcher node, which I will also go over. But just to show you real quick, if I search catcher, and I input that into one of our shapes uh, materials. It is now a catcher for that light. And that's how that operates. But uh, we will uh, get into that when we go over textures. So let's switch this back to light. And right here we can change our projector ID, which when we use those catchers, we can uh, change what projector it's catching. And our projector priority, because we can have multiple projectors. Now, if we have multiple projectors, just know this is going to multiply the light. So if I say copy this and add another projector in here, because we can have multiple projectors, you can see that just intensified the light. So even if we bring in the same footage that intensified it, it's adding on top of each other. And under our shadows, whether we enable shadows or not, it will uh, cast shadows on anything behind, provided you have shadows set up on your other shapes within your controls. If we have a shadow receiver, it will uh, catch those shadows. And your shadow settings are exactly the same as they are for our spotlight. Because remember, our projector is in essence a spotlight casting our media as light through its projector. So that is the projector 3D node. I will see you in the next node breakdown.